All right, guys, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification. Also, if the video was helpful to you or you like it, please hit that thumbs up as it gives a, a big boost to the channel. It helps the channel a lot and it would be highly appreciated. So let's get to it. Hey, what's up, guys? This is just going to be a quick video to talk about the Western Digital Easy Store external hard drives, specifically the eight terabyte models. Now, for years, people have known that they could purchase these drives and inside of them were rebadged uh, Western Digital Reds. And for a while, they were actually red label drives. You could crack them open and find a red label drive. And then they moved them over to white labels, which were still essentially the same drive, just with a less recognizable label. Uh, but you could still read the, um, the model number off of it using certain software and figure out that it was a Western Digital Red drive. Now, the model number for those drives was WD80EZAZ or WD80EZAZ. Now, one of the biggest benefits of this is that same drive, if you purchase it as a WD Red, uh, was about $100 to $120 more. So by buying one of these external drives, you could essentially get some uh, pretty high grade uh, hard drives, whether you were running a uh, network attached storage system, a server, or just one of these as standard uh, external hard drives uh, used the way they were meant to be. Now, over the last two months or so, maybe two and a half months, this has changed. Um, there's not a lot of information on the internet about this, which is why I'm doing this video, because I'm just going to talk about what little bit of information I could find and then have a place for you guys uh, to post in the comments if you happen to get more information or can verify any of the things that I'm speaking on. Essentially, in most of Western Digital's external uh, hard drives now, whether it be the Elements, the MyBook, or the uh, the Easy Store, they've changed the drives that were inside the uh, the housing. And that number is WD80, EDAZ, EDAZ, instead of EZAZ. Now, when you look up that model number, you find maybe one page on Google, and that's at the time of recording this video. So that may change by the time uh, some of you guys are watching this. Now, going through the little bit of information I could find on Reddit, it seems like some people uh, seem to think these are data center drives, which are the Ultrastar drives that Western Digital put out about two years ago, better known as the Ultrastar DC-HC320. Now, these data center drives are air-cooled drives, uh, which means they're not helium-filled like the red ones that were in a lot of these units before. Now, there's no 100% confirmation that's what these drives are. It's just from everything that folks have put together from doing research, this is what it's leaning to the most as what these drives are. Now, there's a couple of different reasons these could be being used. With everything going on in the last few months, uh, with all the um, shutdowns throughout China and anywhere else that they may get parts, they just may be short on the red drives that they had been using. And this is what they have to put in these. That way they don't have to slow down production. The other running theory is that it could just be a mistake uh, that maybe these drives weren't ever specifically supposed to be put into a lot of these cases. I find that one a little bit harder to believe only because these drives are popping up in three different versions of Western Digital's external drives. And I can't imagine that they would have a mess up that large and that uh, quality control didn't, didn't catch it. So I'm leaning more towards the, the first idea that folks are having is that it was possibly just due to a shortage of drives. This is what was available in bulk so they could keep production up. Um, from a cost perspective, it's not like these drives are any more or less than the uh, the Reds. I mean, they're data center drives. So if anything, they might even cost more than the Reds they were putting into these units. Now, my biggest concern about this drive, and this is probably the, the biggest red flag and what made me want to do this video to begin with, the standard external drives usually run about 35 to 38 C while on idle. I know the uh, the external drive that's sitting on my desk right now when it's idle runs at about uh, 34 C. And then when it's in use, it can get up to about 45, 46, uh, maybe a little bit in the higher 40s uh, during heavy usage. These new drives, on the other hand, when you plug them in and run Crystal Disk, I had one plugged in for maybe about an hour and... Um, the temperatures got up to about 53 degrees. Now, mind you, this is plugged in, no data on it, just sitting still idle, doing no work, and it was already up to about 54C within an hour. Um, both of the drives that I had did the exact same thing, and that temperature is quite high. I mean, it was enough to throw off the temperature alert and crystal disk. Um, and there's been some comments throughout the Reddit forums that I was 
reading about this drive where during use case scenarios, they were getting up to 70 plus degrees inside casings. If you have a few of these and you're putting them into like a network attached storage and you have four or five of them side by side and they're all getting up to 70 plus, that's gonna create probably way more heat than any of those little cases were ever designed to kind of to kind of cool down and it's gonna make those drives even warmer. Now, my thoughts on this is a majority of data centers are gonna have their server rooms cooled um, with some type of uh, air conditioning system, they're pumping cool air in, a, a fan system, whatever. They're gonna have additional cooling that we at home probably don't have access to. That's gonna keep these data center drives much cooler than the case that they're being used in. These little plastic shells that Western Digital is putting these drives in is not uh, efficient enough on the cooling. Uh, when people are shucking these and putting them in their computers, it's not efficient cooling. And when you're putting them in NAS drives, it's not efficient cooling. Now that's really all the information that I have currently. Uh, that's the theories that are out there. Um, please post in the comments if you can find any other information about this drive, because considering how hard it is to find any information on this model number at all, it would be nice to have one place that everyone can kind of go to and post instead of having to look through five or six different message boards to kind of get the information you need on these drives. Now, I'm personally taking my two drives back. I don't feel comfortable with external hard drives that are getting that hot. The data that I put on them is far too important for me to risk losing because I don't have adequate cooling uh, to cool down these external drives. Now, again, the piece of software that I use to get all the information about my drives, as well as see the temperatures is Crystal Disk. Uh, you can do a Google search for it and I'll even put a link down below for anyone interested in looking at it. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel tremendously. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification for future video notifications. All right, guys, thanks a lot. And until the next one.